Good morning. Welcome back to The Groomsman. I'll be your host, Jonathan. Uh, today I'm using Clown Fruit by PAA, Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. I got this last year on the drop. Uh, they do it every year at Halloween. At least they have for the last few years. It's a really nice scent. It's got a bit of sweetness right up front. Um, kind of a black licorice scent. It comes from a Dionese. I'm not really a big fan of that kind of scent. I don't like black licorice, but with the everything else he's got going on in here, it blends so well together that I really like it. Some people call it like root beer candy or it smells like root beer candy. I really like it. that anise smell is kind of front with a bit of sweetness, so I get where they say root beer candy, and it's got like some woodiness back in the background. Um, the dry down is really nice on the aftershave slash cologne. It's a CK6 stuff. I got it loaded up on my bowl with my chisel and hound brush. Uh, I tourmaline is what it's called. It's pretty cool looking kind of stone. I'm not sure if the camera picks up how neat the CK6 is a, it's a vegan soap, we've never used it before. Uh, it's pretty expensive, considering, or comparatively speaking. Um, and they just had a price increase in the last couple months on the CK6, or I think across the board on their stuff. It wasn't like a huge price increase, but it was a price increase. And the CK6 was kind of already expensive. Um, I get what some people say about price per ounce and whether or not it's worth it or not. I totally understand that. The thought process there because some of these soaps it makes it really hard to you know, spend that kind of money on this stuff it's a big tub i mean a lot of people's arguments are oh it costs more than the ck1 but you get an extra ounce because this is a five ounce jar and the ck1 comes in a four ounce jar but price per ounce it's more expensive and i don't think having a bigger jar is really for me it's not a selling point in any way to have a bigger jar I would rather have a smaller jar. I'd rather have a two ounce jar. I wish all companies did like a two ounce or a three ounce jar. I think two ounces is a really good size. You don't, what do I need five ounces of soap for? I want to have a lot of different soaps. I wanna be able to have like 50 different soaps that I can go through and sniff and figure out which one I wanna use for the day and I have, like to have that variety. But if I have a five, by five ounce tub that takes ages to get through, it makes it really hard to, I mean, especially like a soap company makes, like PA is a pretty big company. They have a lot of scent options on their normal, just normal website, they have a lot of scent options. And then they have a lot of seasonal releases and special releases. And uh, I just saw they're bringing back some of the stuff that they discontinued, like Old Salty. Um, so they have a lot of options. So it's hard to want to get all that stuff when to get a CK6 soap and splash is well over $50 plus shipping. And then you have like this huge space constraint that you're having all these soaps and splashes are. I think, I'm not sure. Well, I know a lot of the tub size comes from people wanting to brush load in the tub. I totally get the desire for that. I've done that before with some of my soap at the beginning. Uh, I kind of transitioned to just doing bowl lathers now. Um, versus loading in the tub. I like the option to resell a soap that's only been scraped or scooped um, like that versus uh, it's a lot harder to resell a soap that's been lathered in and I think it gets wet it's a lot harder to keep dry uh, and I in my uh, use I've had scent degradation I don't know six of one it doesn't the other but I, I would prefer a smaller tub option. Razor today Z uh, Asylum Evolution or the Evo by uh, Bull Goose Shaving. Asylum is their in house brand there. Uh, they don't offer this anymore. I'm not sure if they will again. When I got this, it had already been discontinued and I found it on Facebook on the marketplace. It wasn't marked or wasn't labeled correctly for the name. I had to go and look it up. Actually, I think I asked for help in a group. I took a picture, a screenshot, and I asked some people on Facebook if they could help me ID because I wasn't familiar with the brand. I had never bought anything from Bulgues before. It 
it was a, a really good deal. It was like four other razors, three other razors. I think it was four total. Um, and either came out to 25 bucks a razor or 50 bucks a razor, which is really good considering this one was like 200 bucks all by itself. Brand new. And it's not available anymore. I haven't used it in a while. I love the look. I like the handle. You can't stand it up because it's got like a rounded handle, but it's really small, very nimble. You can see like it's, it's very small. Like it fits easily in your hand. But I don't know. I like the handle. I, I, it's a really easy to hold. Kind of balance it on my pinky there. It's very nimble and easy to move around your face. It's not very bulky at all. I know when I was reading about this online, it was a uh, it was a replication of the Darwin razor that uh, came out of England. Very cool looking razor. I've never seen one. I, I would suggest check it out. The Darwin. It looks like this, obviously, but the finish is different. It's not stainless steel. It's um. Darwin was made out of a different kind of steel that I guess is like really hard to replicate because that kind of steel, the process to make it has a lot of toxic byproducts. I can't remember what it's called anymore, but a very cool looking design. The head thread through, threads through the top of the top cap or the handle threads through the top of the top cap. So there's not um, a post that comes down. The original Darwin is uh, quite rare and sought after. And I've, seen, I've seen them come up on eBay a few times over the, the last couple years and they always go for like mad money, like over a thousand dollars. I can't remember how much the last one went for, but... One of the most expensive vintage DEs I've ever seen go for on there. And that wasn't some kind of like collector's piece that was like, I don't know, autographed by somebody or made for a certain person. But this was supposed to be a one for one replication of that razor. It wasn't, there wasn't any design modifications. I find it to be very smooth. Um, last time my memory of using it like that has been a while was that it was pretty mild, a little bit inefficient. But the design is pretty cool. It's got these little teeth guards right here. It's definitely a safety bar, but it has these like little channels. Bang. There you go. You can see those channels on there. Pretty interesting design. Uh, obviously it's got three posts or two posts. And then like I said, the handle just threads right through the top cap. Can you see that? So there's no center post. It does make it, you have to have this handle. You can't uh, just swap out handles or anything. The, the tolerances on the pins are a little bit loose. I either not, it's not a very tight tolerance razor. It does not gonna keep your blade super still. So I find you have to kind of screw it in most of the way and then you use the, the edge of the blade that's sticking out and adjust it just a little bit so that you have even blade exposure on both sides. I had it perfect and then I had to take it off and show you. But otherwise, sometimes it might be like a little bit more blade exposure on one corner than the other because it's sitting a little wonky, so you just adjust with the corner. Which was the standard design for most DEs in that time frame. The old Gillettes were the same way and that was considered a feature. The, the edges of the double-edged blade um, sticking out, that was a, a feature they added so that you could adjust the blade easily to make sure it was centered up. I know they did, after the initial run of this razor went out, I got some feedback about the efficiency stuff, and then they made a Model T version um, that was more efficient. I wish I had that one. I think I've seen one of these hit the buy-sell trade page. 
since I've been on there, or since I've, been, since I've gotten this razor or not. I don't get sold that much, it seems like. I got some other finish options too. Um, I think they had a highly polished version. This is like the satin one. And then I think they had a brass. Yeah, they did have a brass. Uh, Scott just got one of those recently. I have a, a Schick in here again. Surprise, surprise, if you've been watching my last videos, I've been using these pretty exclusively. I'm really digging these blades. I hope the Razor Club gets some back in stock. They, everyone kind of ran to go get them the hype was out there. They're currently sold out. I might have to email them just to ask. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to find another supply because I really like these blades. Um, they're made in Germany uh, by the Schick branch in South Africa. It took me a while to figure that out. Uh, Schick.co.za, which is South Africa somewhere down there. Um, cannot buy direct from Schick. I looked on the website, they got all kinds of stuff. They don't have any of their double edged shapey stuff. I mean, obviously, they make the blade, but they don't have it on their website. The US Schick, and I think the Canada one, um, they have the Wilkinson sword blades, which are made in the same plant in Germany. And a Wilkinson sword uh, DE razor. They're all owned by. Edgewell, I believe it is now. It's a giant conglomerates. But if Rachel Cook doesn't stock them, then I'll have to go find somewhere in South Africa that's well on the ship. It's very smooth. Very little blade feel. You can hear it. Or I can hear it at least. I'm pretty sure you can hear it. I'll be hearing a dog barking in the yard. for the last pass. CK6 is performing well because I like the scent on Clown Fruit. Um, I have several sets of CK6. I've not bought anything from them in a while. They've been doing a lot of re-releases. Obviously, they have their standard stuff that they already, you know, is available every day. And they have their seasonal releases and then they've been releasing, uh, like, uh, Discontinued sentence from the past, re-releasing them. I think it came back from their holiday advent calendar thing they made with shade soaps from disc their discontinued shade soaps, and they kind of spiked interest. So they've been re-releasing those again. I like it. I don't know if I'll keep buying PA. I really like their. They have some really nice scents. Um, I think they do a really good job with their blending and their and their scents. I think their aftershave cologne is really nice. It's, um, I think it's the reason that drew me to PA in the first place was I got one to try once and their aftershave splashes are very strong. They're very heavily scented and they last a while. Some things are really heavily scented, but then it still burns off really quick. But the PA stuff, like 98% of the ones I've used, um, 
definitely stick around, and I, I like that, and it's not a, a common thing in aftershaves. Which again, that's not what aftershaves are meant for, it's with colognes or EDPs and EDTs and whatnot are meant for. Although, PA does bill theirs as the aftershave slash cologne. And it acts as such. Their soaps are quite expensive. I'm not sure that it's worth the price. CK1 is really good too. CK1 is a lot cheaper. I mean, I like the CK6. I just don't know if I like it for a $50 set. I did when I first got it and I didn't have a lot of experience and now I just use a lot of other soaps and It's very smooth, even against the grain. Like I said, still very little blade feel. That's not a bad shape. It passes lather pretty effectively through those channels and then underneath, but sometimes you can kind of feel the the blade lose contact a bit. I think because the uh, the blade edge is so close against that guard that it makes it easy to just have too much soap where your blade's not getting enough contact. So maybe rinsing is a little bit more required than some other razors, but. Noteworthy, but not a big deal. It was more efficient than I remember. It's not like Rex Ambassador efficient. Maybe the last blade I paired it with was a little bit more mild or something. That's a really good shave. I'm pleasantly surprised. I think I was kind of going into it expecting 
Well, since it's been a while, my memory's that it was going to be a little bit more inefficient. And I was worried I'd have to switch to another razor to do like pickups, but well, that's a really good shape. There's still, I always have like a patch right here along my jawline. Just never wants to get picked up. It kind of hair comes down and then runs along this jawline and just runs pretty flat to the skin. Whatever. Idiosyncrasis. Idiosync. I can't say that word. Weirdness with my skin. We do a quick cold water rinse and I'll come right back for a splash. All right, I'm back. Thanks for sticking with me. Matching splash, clown fruit. Uh, this is the hollow label. Not that it really makes any difference, but uh, I just like the artwork on the hollow label a little better. I'm not a big fan of clowns. In general, I don't, I like the, the hall label. I don't like the clown on that one. It kind of weirds me out. But this one, I like the, the label on that one. The newer PAs have a, a flow restrictor in there, which is nice. The old ones did not. I say old, relatively. I think he started doing it like a year ago, give or take. It didn't bother me too much. They didn't have a flow restrictor, but if you weren't paying attention, you'd end up with like a ton of splash, a lot more than maybe you wanted. Or you end up wasting some because it's just too much. So I do like that. It stops from accidental spillage. I think there's a bit of menthol on this one. No, well, maybe not. Elderflower, hydrosol, fragrance, glycerin, aloe, liquid silk, tobacco absolute, steeped wormwood, and a Hungarian oak. I like it. The scent is like, you get that anise, that kind of black licorice scent right up front. Not my favorite scent in the world, but the blend is really nice. And that anise kind of tones down a lot, and then you get a lot of woodiness that comes up behind it. I think it's a very nice, that sweetness that you get, and that like when you're first smelling the tub, there's a bit of sweetness there. Not a lot of sweetness in the splash. Just a little bit. But the sweetness goes away really uh, quickly well. It goes away very quickly as well uh, as part of that dry down. So sweetness disappears, that anise kind of drops down. It doesn't go away completely, but it drops down a lot. And it allows those base notes to really come up. I really like it. I probably would have never bought this, but I got, I bought something from somebody and they do in some extras, like some blades. And I had a, a, a star jelly sample of clown fruit. It was called Will of the Wisp back in the day before they renamed it. And uh, I tried it. My first thought was, "E black licorice. And then I tried it, and I was like, man. Like, an hour later, I'm like, that really smells good. I really like this stuff. And I'm glad I picked up this scent. It really does. The dry down is really nice. The shave was really good with the Evo. Uh, like I said, it's not the most efficient racer in the world. It's not like Rex Ambassador efficient. I wish it was so pinch up. But it was a really good shave. And it's really fun to use. I dig the small handle. I like the way it looks. It's pretty, it's very unique. Uh, obviously, it's um a replica of a vintage razor but still i'm never gonna get i very unlikely to ever get the the darwin razor so i'm pretty happy I, I was able to find that one out there which is pretty hard to find as well but i hope you enjoy the shave hit the buttons if you don't mind i certainly appreciate it i uh, hope you liked it and i hope to see you here again later this week